What's good fam? You really seem to like watch me edit videos, so today we're gonna run it back. And since I finished watching Game of Thrones and I'm really heartbroken because it only goes down from here, we're gonna create something in a similar style. It's not gonna be hella complicated, I don't really have a concept for this, the only thing I know is that we got a sword on our screen. <laughs> Alright, so that's what we got on the screen, I just wrote to brush the sword. What do we do with this? Um, Maybe let's start with the camera. 35mm preset hit OK, OK again, then we're gonna create a new null object, Parent the camera to the null. Rename it to cam control 1. We're gonna put it underneath the sword and let me just change the color. Turn on 3D, open up the second view and I feel like we could actually do something that I taught you in one of the episodes. Just playing around with rotation so it's kind of giving you more depth. So for example here I would just probably do something like that. That might look actually pretty cool. What if we put one here and then we took the other one to the bottom and then play around with the values for rotation over here. I would probably put it on the other side, yeah. I kind of want to play with X, yeah, something like that could be cool. So now since we played around with rotation, if I change Z position, you're gonna notice that we got that 3D feel. Alright, the text I'm gonna drop here is gonna be winter is coming. And maybe do it like that. We're gonna make some adjustments here. I feel like we could change is to a different font, maybe semi bold. Gonna make it smaller. Something like that is actually pretty cool. And let's see what happens if we actually create a camera movement. Oh yeah, I forgot about 3D. I would probably take that text and with Z position drag it away and increase scale. I definitely went overboard. Let's use one of the graphs. I might actually take these two and drag them a little bit backwards. And actually take everything here and drag it a little bit downwards. Just to have the winter in the middle. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do is create keyframes for position for both of the swords. And then we're just gonna play around with Y. Do the same thing for that sword. Use the same graph. Hmm, I don't know if I like it. Let me just see the keyframes over here. Hmm. I'd probably have to adjust it a little bit. Basically we're very close, so I'm gonna move further away. And now I'm gonna apply the same graph again. Yeah, I went overboard. Okay, I'm gonna match these keyframes with that one. Okay, it looks pretty cool to me, to be honest. And then we could probably create a movement going towards the left, so I'm gonna duplicate that layer, the, the last keyframe, and parent one to two. Now we're gonna move to the right with this, and I feel like here we need a very sharp movement, so I'm gonna use that graph. Okay, we need to squeeze it in and adjust the timing. Okay, we're gonna add one of the text animations to this. Maybe blur. We're gonna do it like that. Just so we have a slight blur. We could actually move a little bit forward. And maybe let's play around with the rotation. Just trying to find something that could match the situation here. Okay, not bad. I'd probably extend these keyframes so the movement is remained even more. Yeah, pretty good. And then we're gonna take these two swords, I'm gonna hit Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and we're gonna delete the keyframes I've created for them. And I'm gonna recenter it. Okay, so that's what we have here. Let's put it in random positions. It might be interesting. Let's just play around with this. Eventually we're gonna find something good. I'm gonna duplicate cam control 2, hit U, delete the last set of keyframes, and parent 2 to 3. We're gonna move back with the position like that. Actually, whenever we were moving back, we could delete what we've created so far. So two swords and then the winter is coming text. We could actually put it here just for the clarity and the other swords could be trimmed over here. Okay, we need to make some adjustments. And maybe, you know, let's play around with them one more time. Just like that. Okay, I need to extend the layers. And we're gonna fade them in. Little adjustment. I really would like to have a dragon over here, but it's gonna take a lot of time. Hmm. I got an idea. Instead of rotor brushing the whole dragon, we're gonna drop one over here, then go to project, open up motion essence, and I'm gonna grab animations, Polaroid, I'm gonna open up motion essence 10.1, and then we're gonna take that dragon and paste it in our placeholder. I'm gonna delete the text, go back, and maybe make some adjustments. I'm gonna add Lumetri color to this. I can type. And now I'm gonna head over to curves, and we're gonna decrease the saturation for everything apart from the red eyes. So we're gonna do it like that. Ooh, 
is looking pretty cool. And also I think I'm gonna create an S curve. It's looking nice. Let's go back and we're gonna drop that Polaroid onto our timeline. And then we're gonna turn it into 3D, make sure it's in the middle, adjust rotation. That's pretty cool actually. All right, it's starting to look pretty good, but I feel like we could actually replace this with Motion Essence 10.1 plus Transition. So it's basically the same thing, but it's got a transition in the beginning. So I'm just gonna copy all these settings and paste it into the new layer. And then we're gonna delete the last one. Ooh, okay, let's adjust the timing. We could actually create something reminding of a fire. Just don't know how to do it yet, but we'll figure it out. I kind of want to have two more swords somewhere here. So we're going to hit Ctrl C, Ctrl V, put it above the dragon and we're going to recenter it. Now I'm actually going to reset the values over here. Could actually select them all and do the same over here. And now I kind of want to have them closer to the camera and put one here, rotate it with Z, then take the other one and also rotate it with Z. Okay, I feel like I need to push them in with the position a little bit and maybe scale them down. Okay, let me just move backwards with the camera. I got an idea we could create a keyframe for position over here and then we're gonna slide in the sword from one side like that and then do the same for the other side. Now let's extend the keyframes and we're gonna use one of the graphs. Okay, it's not really visible. Oh, I know why it's not visible because I actually created keyframes for opacity. Now it makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let me just adjust the timing again. It's all about these small adjustments. Whenever I'm creating, I'm just spending so much time on adjusting every single detail. But that's what makes a good animation, I guess. Kind of randomly pop up. i would probably extend it a little bit. And make the movement a bit faster. Okay, pretty good. I know what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna extend it and I'm gonna select these two keyframes. I don't need Z rotation. And I'm gonna use some um, sharp graph. Let's see. <laughs> That's a bit too sharp, so we're gonna use an intro. That's still too sharp. I'm gonna use another one. Okay, pretty good. But I kinda wanna slow down these swords. So basically I want to kind of match the movement of the swords with the camera, so it's kind of in the similar pace. Yeah, now it seems perfect. And by the way, if you have a good show that comes close to Game of Thrones, which I think is impossible, let me know in the comments. I'm currently watching House of the Dragon, but yeah, it's not even near. All right, along with the movement over here when we're pushing back, I feel like we could use the technique that I've shared with you recently in one of the tutorials. So for this, I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna rename it to invert. Then we're gonna add the invert effect. We're gonna put it below our swords that are here the ones in the front and also below our motion essence, which is the dragon. So for this, I'm gonna trim it somewhere here and then we're gonna create a circle in the middle with our mask tool, like that. Let's open up properties. We're gonna decrease the pixels, hit the stopwatch, move forward. And here we kind of wanna increase the pixels. Okay, now we're gonna use the mid graph. Let's see. Okay, we need to adjust the timing. Okay, looks pretty good. A bit of... Ooh, that's perfect. And now from this position, I feel like we could go back. So I'm gonna hit Ctrl D, hit U on the keyboard, the, the last keyframe parent 3 to 4. And now we're gonna increase the value for Z to get back to the dragon. And we're gonna use a sharp graph in the middle. Okay, we need to adjust the timing. Okay, looks good to me. And now I feel like we could replace the dragon with something else. I actually found a logo of Game of Thrones, so we're gonna drop it here. And we're gonna trim the dragon at this position. Now let's go back. Okay, that's a bit too early, so we're gonna go back. We're gonna decrease the scale first of all. And then we need to make an adjustment. Let's see now. Probably somewhere here it'd be better. Also, I'm gonna create another adjustment layer on top. Let's call it Blur. And we're gonna trim it for two frames. And we're gonna add Gaussian Blur. Now I'm gonna bump up the blurriness and change it to horizontal. Now let's go back. Let's see. I'm um, a bit too late. Okay, after that it should be fine. Yeah, and together with that transition on our dragon, I would like to trim our invert layer and make a pretty similar thing so we could borrow this. So I'm gonna hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V and put it somewhere here. 
Actually, it would be good if we put it on top of everything. Okay, maybe for only one frame. Let me bump up the blurriness. I'm actually gonna use it only for the things that are below our swords and the motion essence. Okay, it seems better now. Okay, so here's the change. So we need to adjust the timing. It's actually pretty good. I'll probably go back here and I'll increase the blurriness. Let's see now. And also together with the transition, I would like to put something in the background that would kind of simulate Dragonfire. So for this, I'm gonna grab Pro Edit Pack. Flames would be perfect. I got Flames Transitions and also I got a background for this. Let's take maybe 4K and we're gonna grab the orange ones. I'm gonna turn it into 3D, put it below our swords. And I'm gonna trim the beginning because there's a transition. Okay, okay, it's looking pretty good, but we need to adjust it to probably do it like that and scale it up. And now I feel like we could make it a bit more dynamic with an adjustment layer and a shake. So for this, I'm gonna use a shake from Universe. I'm gonna change it to 105 and I'm gonna trim it right at this position. I don't know, for some reason, I feel like we could actually change the color of the flames to white. So I'm gonna add tint. Yeah, I, I think that's gonna be perfect. So now we're gonna make some adjustments. So I'm gonna open up properties for the camera, go to transform, alt click point of interest, type in wiggle, 1,10, maybe even more, like two. Now I'm gonna go back to our placeholder and I feel like we could use deep glow for Game of Thrones. Let's just adjust the settings a little bit. Okay, that's a bit better. By the way, we got resolution at third, so we can work smoothly. Let me rename it to shake and then we're gonna add another adjustment layer, which is gonna be called vignette. I'm gonna add vignette to this. I'm gonna bump up the amount. Also, we're gonna pin highlights a little bit and maybe increase the angle of view. I'm gonna trim it here. I low-key like it because it gives me the full focus on Game of Thrones. And now we definitely need to add something to our text over here. Maybe shine would be a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna head over to the colorize, turn off the colors, that's actually fire. Maybe we could actually keyframe it, so I'm gonna hit the stopwatch here, move to the beginning and decrease it to zero. Maybe let's add a graph to this. Let's see. Maybe we shouldn't start from zero, but from like two. Okay, I'm gonna take it. And then we're gonna add our lovely TV lines. Let me rename it to TV lines and we're gonna add my preset. And let's add another adjustment layer, put it on top. We're gonna rename it to posterize time and I'm gonna add the effect. And maybe we should change it to like, hmm, 14. Let me turn on the motion blur on everything here. Ooh, looks kinda good. But I feel like we could go for something bigger like maybe 17. And also we need to change the shutter angle to 200 and shutter face to negative 100. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now let's check it out in the full quality. Yeah, that's actually sick. I really like that pushback when we're going back and the invert effect is going along with the movement. Maybe to make it even better, we could head over to the camera, camera options, turn on the depth of field. Let me decrease the quality so we can work with this. Open up the second view and we're gonna adjust the focus distance. First of all, I'm gonna bring up the aperture to 250. So now somewhere here, we're gonna set the keyframe for focus distance, but let's adjust it to the text. Then we're heading over to another scene. So somewhere here, we need to also adjust the focus distance to our dragon. Then we're going back, another adjustment. And then we could probably copy that keyframe and paste it here. And it should be all good. I really like these swords being blurred out right now because it kind of allows you to focus on our dragon. Maybe we should go for something crazy like 400. I sort of have to see it in the full quality to tell if it's good. Let's make the PC burn because we're making a dragon, so it makes sense. Not that big of a difference because the swords are not really filling out the whole scene, so it's really hardly noticeable to see that blur. But these are the details that people don't really pay attention to, 
but in general it makes the whole animation better. They just don't know about it, but they like it more. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up here. My heart is broken because Game of Thrones is done, but we honor the memory of the series with our beautiful animation. If you like the video, drop a like, and also if you're interested in the assets I used, they are in the description below. So that's it for today, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.